Welcome to the Dolls and Donuts Podcast, episode 51. Happy Heart Shape Month. In today's episode, we'll cover what's going on in the Amorites community and what's been happening at Robin's Vegan Dollhouse. Also, we have kind of a little special announcement to make. We do? Yesterday was your birthday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, do I know about this? <laughs> yes. It's all old news now. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> on to next year. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Matt made me a homemade vegan afternoon tea so it was very nice and I laid the table because I wanted it to be really cute but <laughs> he cooked it made everything scones and all that so it was good and all the rest of, other than that I just was in my pajamas and read my books and it was good that's what birthdays are yeah. supposed to be that was pretty much the whole weekend because my birthday was on a Monday so we kind of like did a three-day thing got up early went somewhere ate came home by like three or four read for like two or three hours and then watched a movie and had dinner and then went to bed that's what we did for three days. <clears throat> and it was glorious. <laughs> and I got like two books read, so it was great. If all of our weekends were just three-day weekends, I feel like there could be even more of that. Yeah. But no. The man keeping <sighs> us down. It's terrible. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so, but February's upon us, and so Valentine's Day is coming. It's a cute month. I mean, whatever. Say what you will about Valentine's Day. I get it. You know. Sure. I'm not gonna hate on anybody for liking it or disliking it because I get both of them, but it's it's cute. It's a cute month. A lot of cute stuff, mm-hmm. you know. So I like that about it. So. I do as well. I'm gonna be going to a heart shaped themed part tea party. Also. Yeah, like that. That stuff's cute. That's fun. Yeah, I'm thinking about going to Mirrors yeah. for for the de- Valentine's Day because I wanted to go for my birthday weekend, but it was a mushroom century tea. <laughs> I'm like. I even called. I said, do you guys have your normal menu too? They're like, no. I said, okay, well. I said, I hate mushrooms. She said, yeah, this isn't the weekend for you. I'm like, well, it's my birthday weekend, so So I'm not coming. Bad planning. Bad bad planning. Guess I'm not coming. Uh, So that's why Matt made me my own, so at home. So that was nice. Um, But, yeah, I might go there for the Valentine's Day one. I wonder if they're doing it. They're doing it, like, the whole weekend. They're doing it, like, two weekends. Oh, really? Like, they've expanded it for their Valentine's oh, Day. Oh, maybe I will, too, then, because we have to drive up there anyway for Macchiato's training on the 15th. Well, they definitely are doing it on the 15th. Okay. Because the day after Valentine's Day. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, they're definitely doing it that weekend. Okay. I think they're doing it the weekend before, too. Okay, cool. Or out. Yeah, I think before. Okay. Yeah. Good. So, yeah, that's always cute. So, I might do that. But other than that, is everything heart-shaped, though? I'm, the wrong, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting. I'm the wrong person to ask, but I would think, you know, I'd be pretty I would disappointed. Expect, <laughs> I would assume. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that'd be nice. Hope we might do that because a few days later, then I go to Ohio for two and a half weeks. So, nice little send off. Yeah. yeah. So, Is yeah. It time for Ask Ashley? Yeah. Oh. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm, we've never forgot that one time. And, that one, that one episode, I almost, I was like, yeah, it's been a long day. <laughs> yeah, ask me whatever you want. What I want to ask you is, are the animals still cute? Yes. <laughs> are they still in danger? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Always, Tell us more. <laughs> well, I'm not really talking about that, but I'm not talking about that specific thing. This is like more vegan news than animal news, which right. I guess is the same, but... It certainly is. It means for every person who's eating vegan, the animals are a little bit less in danger. Yeah, linked for sure, but definitely caters more towards um, vegan concerns or vegan whatever. So um, I meant to, what I'm going to talk about next, I meant to try it before we recorded, and I didn't. Oh. So, sorry. Um, Because I wanted to be like, bam, I tried it, and this is what I thought. So, Yogurtland has launched its first vegan frozen yogurt flavor, which is salted chocolate souffle. So, sounds yummy. Salted chocolate souffle. Yeah. And a souffle is a quiche? What is a souffle exactly? I don't, I don't think it's a quiche. Are you Here. sure? I don't think so. It's some, like, baked, puffy, egg-filled thing, Maybe. Right? I guess I... Yeah. I guess, uh... Yeah. A... Is, yeah. Souffle is a baked, a, a baked egg-based dish, which originated in... Early 19th century France. Okay, well, I don't need to know that. Um, have heavy, egg heavy. Egg yolks, beaten egg whites combined with other ingredients served as a savory main dish or a sweetened, or sweetened it as, as a dessert. So so it's. I think they, they must use it as like a decadent, like in the place of 
We want you guys to know that this yogurt land yogurt is a it's decadent. Like, look, it's a French word, so it's fancy. <laughs> Soufflé. We um, are fancy. This frozen yogurt place is fancy. Yeah, so it's going to be with coconut milk, cocoa powder, and a touch of salt. All right. Um, and it's only, well, of course, I was like, ooh, yay. But it's in from now until February 15th. Shut so up. So it's temporary, yeah. Basically, it's probably for January. <laughs> <laughs> and then they bumped it out until 15. Oh, no. So I definitely want to try it before it goes away. Hopefully, it's just like a test, see how it does, and hopefully they keep it around. I don't know. Is Yogurtland the one that's right here down the street? From I don't know. Okay. I think we should look into There's it. There's Yogurtlands around, for sure. But um, I definitely want to try it. I would like to accompany you for that activity and or hear about it if you go with that one. Uh, because you be know how another. The Good Place has... Do you watch no. The Good Place? Oh. For anyone at home who watches The Good Place, every every single place in the neighborhood is a frozen yogurt stand. And when they were picking what it should be, they were like, what's something that people think they like, but it's really like just okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they were like, frozen yogurt. Great, make all of these restaurants frozen yogurt. <laughs> that, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. It depends on the flavor. Whether I think it's okay or not. Or actually, I really like it. That sounds pretty good. It does sound pretty good. So, uh, yeah. They just said they were... And it's all of them, not just certain it ones? It says nationwide. Great. Limited time flavor on its menu nationwide. Um, and it's just a small blurb on... This is on Veg News, by the way. Um, just talking about that they um, release, are releasing this new flavor in conjunction with its new topping option, which is... Bare naked white chocolate macadamia nut granola, which isn't vegan. So just um, non related it's not related, I guess, in any way to them coming out with vegan flavor flavor. Um, so don't jump on that bandwagon. But anyway, I think it was uh, I'm excited to try it. And I definitely want to before it maybe goes away forever. I wonder if it's <sighs> a thing where they're testing to see how yeah, many they Yeah, That's start. what I'm I'm hoping. So Okay, so everyone do your part. Eat your frozen eat your mediocre frozen yogurt. Yes. <laughs> Be a good American. Um, so the next one's a little more far-reaching and like serious, and this is from the Washington Post. And it's um, ethical veganism is a protected class akin to religion in the UK after landmark ruling. So basically, this guy, um, I think he let me what, quote exactly what who he worked for. He worked for I think it was an animal rights or, or some kind of animal centric. Company. Okay, so this guy um, worked for the League Against Cruel Sports. Um, a group is a group that combats the use of animals in sports, including fox hunting and animal fighting. Um, this is in the UK, and obviously, fox hunting is way bigger there than it is here. Um, it's one of those blue blood blood sports. Um, so that's it's still a thing over there. Um, so I guess that this group, he worked for this group, and he's accused them of improperly firing him. He says that um, basically he they had like investments, kind of um, a wide range of investments, and apparently some of them were in direct like uh, opposition to you know what you would think an animal organization would would go, would would stand for, mm-hmm. and so he um, against what he was supposed to do, let people know that this was happening. And then he was fired for it. So he's saying that he was discriminated against because as an ethical vegan, that's not something that he would be partaken. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can, it goes into way more detail in the article on the Washington Post. But so this whole thing he prompted him to like um, sue them for discrimination against um, its ethical veganism uh, lifestyle and belief system. And, and he won? And yeah, so in the UK... A judge ruled that ethical veganism is now a protected class, similar to religion, under law designated to shield people from discrimination in the workplace and beyond. So we don't know if they're actually going to, what's going to happen with his particular, this particular person's case. Like, he might actually be justifiably fired. We don't know. But he, the, the judge said that if it is based on his ethical veganism and it all, everything else checks out, that it's, he's protected. Because it would be discrimination. Nice. So that's a big deal. That's huge. 
Yeah. So they're not saying that veganism is a religion, but they're saying it's a protected class similar to you can't be discriminated against because of your religion. Love it. So, yeah, that's a big deal. And I did hear that this was a while ago, not I mean that, that long ago, but uh, quite a while ago I heard that um, this that he was going to, like, he was fired and he was, you know, saying he was going to, like, sue and stuff. They're like, mm, this could be interesting. Um, and this, so this is kind of the outcome of it. And it will be covered under the UK's Equality Act, which also covers sexual orientation, race, gender, reassignment, and other categories. Um, and a person just show that their beliefs meet a set of criteria. And the judge believed that ethical veganism falls in those criteria to be protected. That's good. Um, it's needed. Yeah. So, yeah. And they just say it can be really far reaching and hopefully goes on to other places. So like here. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. There's nothing they have to mention here. It says the United States activists note that there are no similar case case law it exists here. There's no precedent for that here at this yeah. point. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's just get the ball rolling over here. So I thought that was interesting because I did, I did hear about it and I was like, mm, we'll see how this goes. And, Definitely went in favor of Ian, so. I mean, I hear stories. People are always tweeting about fucked up shit that happens to them at work. I can't even Relating believe. Relating to veganism? Yeah. Oh, like when someone finds out this girl's vegan, she, like, every time she walks by her desk, she's like, so my family's going hunting this weekend. Like, taunts her. Oh, my God. Isn't no. fucked up? Yeah. Yeah. That's awful. That's why we need those laws. People are even I mean that that can that can just be considered harassment in the workplace. Even if it's not I mean Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I would never let that go. Like the slide. Yeah. Like I've never had anybody like say something like that to me. Ever. Yeah, like at work for sure. Like if people have been very curious and like ask me questions that I feel I'm like, really? You know, like I try not to be like stubby ignorant, but like they <laughs> literally ask me questions that are like very you know, vegans here all the time and are very basically yeah. easy, be, easily explained away and stuff, but it's like genuine. They're not like trying to be snarky, snarky or any way yeah. or be like, or say, obviously that's not even a question. Yeah. That's just saying my family's away hunting. Um, so I've never had, I've never felt like somebody is like trying to harass me in yeah. the workplace about being vegan, which yeah. I guess I'm lucky because a lot of I people deal with that. we're also lucky because of where we live. That's so true. People are a little more open and yeah. accepting of different types of people here yeah i agree so that's good um yeah so that's all i'm going to talk about oh one thing i just saw today but i didn't put it in the show notes or anything um obviously with like the golden globes and all these award shows going vegan um for their the dinner served at at the oh cool yeah did you hear about that uh-uh. yeah um so it's kind of like happening it's just like snowballing through all of the because this is award season right now so they're all kind of following suit and they just announced today that the oscars is going to be like almost completely vegan it's like the Oscars doesn't serve dinner there, but there's like a pre-luncheon that's going to be all vegan. There's some other event that's going to be all vegan, and then the governor's ball afterward is going to be like seventy percent vegan. So there's just one piece there that's going to be mo- mostly vegan, mm-hmm. but other than that, they're all they're all going vegan this year. So cool. Who knows if what me? If I think uh, who knows if they will. They want to do it. To, they're all saying, you know, oh, we really want to like sustainable. That's what we're all about. Okay, well, let's see if you do it again next year when mm-hmm. you're not being pressured by. It. The two other, you know, all these award shows that happened before you yeah. in this in the year. You know, this is already this year. Um, so, we'll see. But it's good. And uh, I think it was the Golden Globes that Joaquin Phoenix was, like, instrumental in getting them to go vegan. Okay. And he won for Joker, and he went up, and he, like, talked about it. First thing, when he got his award, he, talked, he mentioned, he acknowledged it. You can, you can find that on YouTube or okay. on Instagram. Um, so, that was good. He was instrumental in getting that had to happen and now it's just snowballing so it's good um thank goodness yeah that's using just saw. their power for good sometimes mm-hmm. you know yeah so yeah that's pretty much all the news that stuck out to me so robin what's been happening at the dollhouse Ooh, thanks for asking so in addition to all the million heart things that i already had on the vegan dollhouse.com website i decided to add a new one for this valentine's day so I made vegan mounds bars, which I know you're not mm. a coconut not, fan. Not too crazy about it. So feel free to close not for your everybody. eyes. Not for everybody. Close your ears. <laughs> make uh, ugly faces at everything I'm about to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, they I used um, some date syrup to sweeten them. But you can use rice syrup or agave or whatever. It's really easy to make. And as long as you have shit like silicone molds. 
to put them in, like heart-shaped ones, then they can be heart-shaped. But if it's not Valentine's Day, you can just make them square-shaped or star-shaped or whatever shape you want. Yeah. The possibilities are around. endless. <laughs> just don't make them Ashley-shaped because she's not interested. That would just be like a gingerbread man. <laughs> look like shaped. <laughs> you do look a lot I have the physique. like a gingerbread I have the physique <laughs> of a gingerbread man. I have to be honest. <laughs> Um, my next gingerbread man activity is going to look just like you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that recipe is up on the website. And then the only other recipe I put on the website this month was for a galaxy smoothie bowl, which smoothie bowls are kind of boring. I like them, though. Do you? They taste good. Izzy really likes them, so I made it and gave like, it to her. I do like them. <laughs> I really got really into the Vitality Bowls. Oh, really? But then I love Those are expensive. I, I don't care. You know? And they're not healthy are they they have a lot of sugar yeah they put sugar in there so yeah that's cheaty. um so like the calories aren't bad and i did i feel like i i do i am conscious of sugar so i don't just like oh i know eat what. abandonedly without thinking about sugar and i can't believe like because i did look into like the nutritional stuff before i went there the first time and because um i would when i was volunteering at, at the um food bank on thursdays i would that would be my little treat after i got off mm-hmm. volunteering i'd go get myself a vitality bowl like once a week i got it mm-hmm. and it was Freaking delicious. I mean, I'm like, this is it's freaking delicious. But yogurt land. Then I finally looked. Then I finally, I, I feel like I had looked before, but maybe I miss looked at the wrong line or whatever. But yeah, it was like 25 grams of sugar. And I'm like, no, that's why it's so delicious. Or part of the reason why it's so delicious. Mine was like the nutty bowl I got. So it was like the acai with peanut butter. Mm-hmm. Like that was at the base. It yeah. was delicious. That sounds really good. Bananas on tap. Oh, God. So good. <laughs> Their granola was so, uh, so good. But I'm like, oh, God, no. This is too much sugar. So so you stopped going? I stopped going. Aw, but you liked it. It was I a know, special treat. I know, but I was like, hell no. That's too much sugar. Okay. That's like your whole day's sugar. That's an average person's one meal. whole day. Don't say your and look at me. <laughs> like, that's like how much, like, you're not, like, that was like what you as a person shouldn't go over in a day, in one meal. And there's, like, sugar added in, like, just random stuff. You know, like, bread has sugar in it, whatever. Yeah. So you're already, like, you know you're going to have sh- nothing the rest of the day that has sugar in it. Unlikely, right? So <laughs> Definitely unlikely if you're me. Yeah, so, me too, you know. So, um, I stopped going. Maybe mm-hmm. once in a while is a treat, but I was going every week, and I definitely stopped doing that. Well, I don't add sugar to mine. Yeah, so I should maybe start trying to make them at home or something. Yeah. Because I I'll give I you didn't. some I'll say for your birthday present. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm glad we talked about this. Yes. <laughs> they are very pretty. Then they're gorgeous. They are. And so like you do like the right ones are like they're delicious. Yeah. So okay, well I fan. definitely made it with acai and I also did an acai experiment, like um to see if it actually helps with PMS. I have heard these rumblings. So I did an experiment for two months. It does not help on my cramps. It might just, like, take the edge off, but it's definitely not enough. Like, mm-hmm. I went for, with no drugs for two months to, like, really see, and yeah. it was a painful couple of months. But it helped with some other things, and I'll let our readers or our listeners go to my website if they want to read about it. No, the dirty details? Yeah. I mean, um, I had my TMI, but my last month I was just, like, I hate everything. Yeah. I just wasn't on the couch. Yeah. Like, usually it's emotional or physical. I usually don't get both. Like, well, bam. Usually I'm like, (laughs) paranoia. I do get paranoia Hmm. on my period. Um, Oh, I don't get that. I wonder if it helps It's relatively new. It's over the last five years I started getting paranoid. Oh, you have to do the acai experiment and see if it works on that. Or, like, you know, like, overly emotional, whatever, irritate, irritable, whatever. Those things. Mm Mm-hmm. Or I am doubled over with in pain. I never really get both. Oh, interesting. Guess what? Last month I got both, and I was like, nah. Welcome to womanhood. I'm fat and it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was awful. Usually, I, I guess I'm lucky, but usually it's one or the other. Yes. It usually never happens at both, but. I think it's safe to say you've been lucky up till now. <sighs> <laughs> I definitely felt bad complaining in my blog post about my symptoms because I know some people have it so bad. So I didn't want to be that person to like. <laughs> she's so dorky. Um, I yeah, wish. Yeah, no. Some people. Yeah, people in my family have had to go to the hospital. Yeah, it, and they get like shots for it to like yeah. stop the cramps. And so stuff. they have it really. I missed it probably a few times when I was younger that I probably should have went, but I like was too scared to go to the hospital for it, so I just suffered. Oh. You know what I mean? 
Um, definitely a few times I should have went probably, but it's it's not pain wise. It's much more manageable now that I'm older. Yeah. Like my early teens. I mean, like yeah. Well, mid teens, late like early, very early twenties. It was pretty epic pain. Um, I'm glad it gets better with age. It does. Yeah. Um, and, and I never suffered any emotional stuff. Oh, back then. Yeah. Oh, no. It wasn't until I got like to my like mid twenties that I started like noticing any kind of emotional change. Um, this turned into like the PMS podcast, but yeah, it did. Um, it's, just, it's so interesting. It's just so interesting how it all changes, like changes over time. For yeah. me, it did. Yeah, different things. It cha- it does change over time. Yeah. So I have heard maybe it was from you. I don't know. I have heard that maybe that helps with something. I don't know. So that SIE. Yeah. So bring it back to the food. <laughs> yeah, it definitely talks about it. I mean, I've I've seen people talk about it and stuff on the internet. So I really wanted to try it. So I'm glad I did the experiment. I don't know if it's just a bunch of woo 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 hoopla. I'm definitely going to keep using it for to, for my periods for sure. Um, so it just doesn't help with everything, but it helps with enough of it that it's worth taking. Mm-hmm. I think. Why not? And you only have to take a teaspoon a day. Like, it's not that much. And I've just started putting it in juice because you can't just make a smoothie every time you want to have acai. So do. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan to me. Not actually, apparently. Mm. Um, so, yeah. So, those are the few. Oh, actually, I'd also made cupcakes. I made a lot of cupcakes, you guys. I had to invent a term that is <clears throat> koalarpal tunnel syndrome. <laughs> Because I made so many cupcakes that my hand was, like, in pain. So much pain. I was decorating cupcakes with koala faces. Are you going to talk about why? Because I was raising money. I was in a collaboration that was called Bake for Australia Collab. And a bunch of bakers got together and we raised money by baking things and selling them. Or some people raffled them. And I think some people auctioned them. But I just sold mine. Um, yeah, and if, I mean, money. I feel like I don't even have, shouldn't have to say this, but if you've been living under a rock, it's because Australia is, was on fire for quite a bit. That's an understatement, but just Google it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google Australia fires. Um, so obviously, it affected a lot of wildlife, so a lot of people were raising money for the animals. And um, actually, what's really cool, I finally donated last night after you sent me your money, and I was like, okay, that's I can do this now. It ended up being more because of the exchange rate. Okay. So I only actually raised 125 US dollars, but when I donated it, it ended up being 175. Nice. I know. I yeah. felt all good about that. Yeah. Would you, can you, if people hear this and they want to like, oh, yeah. Send, the the organization something? I sent to is called WIRES. It's yeah. W I R E S. Um, and they are an animal rescue in Australia. You can also give to humans, I guess, if you're into that. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> A lot of humans lost their homes, but I was specifically wanting to take yeah. care of the animals that lost their homes. Yeah. There's a lot of wildlife just destroyed. So, yeah, they definitely need our help, too. So that's good. Yeah. I just so, couldn't. I was like, I don't even know if you have any more cupcakes, but I don't want one. Here's my donation. I know, right? Because I've had so much sugar for my birthday week, and I'm like, I don't even want to look at a cupcake. I don't care yeah. if you got one or not. Yeah, I definitely didn't. I made the exact amount. I was fine with this. I didn't. Even, I was just like, I don't want a cupcake, but here I'm going to venue my donation yeah. for the koalas. It's funny, there was even somebody who messaged me, like, at midnight on Wednesday night, because I said Wednesday was the last day to order. Oh, see, I didn't know when you... And I, could, I was well, like, oh, I sorry, I already baked. I'm definitely not baking anymore, which is good, because there was a little ear catastrophe. Mm. So I'm glad I cut off the baking time and ordering time. Yeah, so good. Those were cute. Cute for a good cause. Yeah. Um, so that recipe's not on my website yet, but I'll have it up by next month, probably. For anyone who wants to make koala cupcakes. Um, and then I also went to a new pop-up called Vegan Alien. Have you been there? I feel like I may follow on Instagram. Probably. Maybe. It's we, we don't have very many Bay Area vegan I vendors. It, it so rings a bell. Makes sense that you'd be following them. Maybe, yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, they're, I think they're kind of newish, or at least I've, I haven't only been seeing them popping up for the past few months. And they have been popping up all over, actually. I think the day after my pop-up, they were going to Sacramento for a pop-up. So they're kind of like all over California, not just in the Bay. And I went in San Jose. They popped up at Cineholic, um, which is actually 
a pretty decent place to pop up because it's not busy. Like people don't think to get cinnamon rolls at like 7 p.m. <laughs> Unless you're Ashley. Those people don't want to know those people. Unless you're already there for food and you might as well get a cinnamon roll because to, why waste a trip? Mm-hmm. Uh, so Honestly, yeah. I'd say that like I'm some kind of cinnamon roll addict. I haven't had Cineholic in so long. Yeah. I think Matt's birthday last year. No, no, year before last. We got a Cineholic cake. You know, they, they either, oh, they do like no, their, yeah, they like do a big like sheet of the cinnamon rolls Ooh. and they do like the toppings differently or whatever. And it's basically like their version of birthday cake. And mm-hmm. we got that for him. That was oh, the last time cute. I had it. So like, how many while people ago, ate that? Uh, me, him, and his parents. Oh shit! So there was, was a lot. There were a lot left. <laughs> I got the smallest bad. one. I mean, yeah. it was like six of their, but their their things are huge. Yeah, it was like are. six of them. It was the smallest you could do, um, to make it you know actually like look like a cake or something okay. like in the one or oh, whatever. Six of them, not. But you could have eaten that in two sittings. Then that's not bad. But there was like a lot of toppings and all that stuff. Like, it was it was <laughs> monstrous. So that was the last time I had it. No. Oh, so now we have now one. We my, know what's gonna challenge. Yeah, us. Now we have one in my hometown. I didn't go in that last time I was there, so I'll go. Over when, I, when I'm home next, and just be like, "Hey guys, you were weren't you just in your hometown?" Yep. Did you have anything delicious? Oh yes. Oh, thank you for asking. <laughs> uh, so when I was in Ohio over in December, I was there for 24 days, unplanned. Um, so I was finally able to like check out some new places. Um, my cousin is vegan, and she works um in a like an outdoor very big like, outdoor mall type situation. I would say it's like Santana Row, but these people, you know, I'll tell you it's like Santana Row. But like some people listening might not even know what that is. But it's like a big outdoor shopping area. And since she's vegan, she like knows all the new places that are opening up there um, or closing and new places are opening. So she had some like uh, pretty good vegan, pretty good, um, good vegan recommendations for me, uh, which I'll get to. The last two are at that, in that complex. Uh, but the first one I'm going to talk about is basically this like hole in the wall, hole in the wall kind of like bar slash restaurant called Happy Dog. And they're basically like, they give you like, um, what place is like this? I mean, I guess kind of like the counter, how you have like the big list menu of like all the different toppings and stuff like that um, for hamburgers. But this is for hot dogs. Oh, cool. I mean, they had field roast oh, good. sausages or whatever. Um, so I wasn't very um, adventurous. Like they have some crazy stuff that you could put on it. Like, I'm like, oh, God, Did disgusting. Did they label which toppings were vegan? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, so I got like vegan chili and like, onions that like grilled good. onions that was pretty simple but i didn't want to go crazy like they had some really weird stuff but okay wait what was the weirdest vegan stuff <sighs> well I, I don't know if what the worst vegan one was but i remember like seeing like spaghettios hmm. there was some kind of cereals you could put on it yeah. i can't remember what cereal it was no. i don't know if it was like fruit loops or something no. weird yeah i remember seeing those i was like what i don't think any of the vegan ones were super weird but i remember seeing they have like weird things like that my sister said she had gotten um uh, spaghettios once on hers mm-hmm. and it was actually good. Okay. At least that's savory, you know? Yeah. Ooh. That doesn't sound Cereal bad. and hot dog, yuck. Uh, and they do big, big things of tater tots. Ooh, So, nice. I, yeah, you like that. I love that. Um, so that was very good. It's kind of like a whole, like I said, a home wall place. Um, and it's just field row, so you can obviously buy that at the store. Um, but it was good. It was just in near downtown Cleveland and um, it's not somewhere you'd, you'd walk. You'd never really look, I mean, think from the outside or you walk in that they would have vegan options, so it's good good to see yeah it is. and then a place that i've been talking about for a while and they finally opened a brick and mortar location was the vegan donut co um donut with a g so we know they were legit um that's in lakewood <laughs> and i really wanted to try them out so i showed up and i got um just like a regular cream filled with chocolate icing and then they had like just regular sprinkles like different kinds of sprinkles i mean at eggnog there was like a maple that had a custard filled and then the cookie dough one. Those are the ones I got. Um, Matt ate the maple one, so I didn't, I didn't get a taste of that. Hmm. Um, but the cream filled and the cookie dough were my favorites. The cookie dough had cookie dough on top? On top. Okay. On top, yeah. Um, and they were delicious. And the girls were so nice. And I was like, oh, yeah, I have a podcast. I'll talk to you guys about you on the podcast. And I'll tag you. And they're like, oh, great. Like, they're very nice. I think it's, like a, it's two sisters hmm. that run it. And they also do, like, um, um, they do some, like, markets and stuff like that. But okay. they have they, they do have a brick and mortar. I think it's only open Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, do they share the space? Is that why? No, I don't think so. No. Um, 
but yeah, living their best life, <laughs> living their best life with those donuts. Um, so it was delicious, and I'll definitely be going back when I go back in three weeks. Um, and they had obviously like eggnog and stuff. They had a lot of holiday theme. They had one that looked like a, it was just a plain, I think, a plain donut, but it was like decorated as a snowman and stuff. It was cute. And their Instagram is really cute. They all they show all the different designs and mm. cool themed donuts that they do. So did we follow them with our account? I don't know. I follow them on my personal one, but we'll check and we'll give them a shout out and tag them and all that. So thank you for your good donuts. Mm-hmm. Um, so the next two places are we're at Crocker Park, which I said is like that big outdoor. Um, shopping center. So the first one was Hot Chicken Takeover, and this is a Omni place that has um, a vegan, a satan vegan uh, chicken sandwich, and you can get it in like like four or five different heats. Um, and I had it twice, and I got the warm, and I was like, "Oh, warm! I can handle that." <laughs> no, it was like, oh, like I was like, I can eat this, but like I'm struggling because it was oh spicy. God. So the next time I went back, I got cold. Okay. Which was, like, perfect. Oh, yeah. So they also have, like, coleslaw and the baked beans. Um, and you put the coleslaw on it. And it was good. Matt thought it was just okay. But I thought it was good. Um, and then kind of the standout regular restaurant was a blue blue sake sushi. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, like, a regular seafood restaurant. But they have a huge vegan sushi menu. Um, they actually have some other options that are vegan that are not just sushi. Um, uh, but I just... Kind of zeroed on. They probably have twenty different vegan sushi rolls. Oh wow! Yeah, it's really good. And, and the one are I they like maki rolls, or are they like the ones at Beyond Sushi and at Shizen, where they're all fancy? Uh, they're they're fan- pretty fancy. Yeah. Nice. Um, I tried a couple, but the one that stood out was the Eden roll. Okay. Um, it Tell was us delicious. More. I don't even know. I have to look it up. So it had delicious. It's hard enough for me to remember the name of this roll, but my cousin goes there a lot. Okay, so my the one that I loved a lot it was called the Eden roll so it's sweet potato vegan tempura mm-hmm. a grilled asparagus edamame hummus sun-dried tomato brown rice soy paper olive oil and sea salt that was the one i loved i love a tempura and a sushi um and the second one i liked the second best was called the thai hippie and that was tofu vegan tempura avocado cucumber carrot cashews and thai basil with thai basil cilantro mint and red onion salad and thai peanut sauce that, that one was really good too. Unusual. Um and like I said, they have like twenty, probably more than that now. Look at that now that I'm looking at the actual menu. Um so yeah. I'm a creature of habit, so I went back twice and I got the same thing twice. So cool. I didn't try any other one. My cousin, she was like, try the eat and roll, because she's tried most of all of them. So um I went with her recommendation and it was very good. Took Matt when he finally made it to Ohio and he loved it. Oh. Yeah. So, so very good option that. there. She did all the homework for you. Yeah, well, she works there. She work, Not at the restaurant, but she works in that complex. So it's easy for her to, like, grab lunch and dinner there. So she knows all, like, the places that are serving vegan stuff. And there was more. There was a few other vegan places I just didn't get to. Mm-hmm. Not ve- vegan options right. um, that I didn't get to. And actually, in that same complex is where Cineholic is. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of options there. And that's in Westlake, Ohio. Um, but, yeah, those are the new ones. I'm going to try to hit a few more new ones when I'm there. Of course, I went to Cleveland Vegan, like, twice. Twice, because good, good shit. Um, love Cleveland Vegan. Um, but it's not a new place, so I didn't really talk about it. <laughs> what if somebody's listening for the first time? Oh, you should go to my blog then. <laughs> <laughs> These aren't even on them because I haven't updated it in forever. Her blog is The Vegan Adventure. Yeah, for anybody who doesn't veganadventure.com, and I have like Cleveland Post, and hopefully I'll add all these. But um, Cleveland Vegan's on there. And they do great brunch, and they do pizza nights, and they do all kinds of stuff. Love pizza nights. Um, yeah, so that's basically the new stuff I had in Ohio. Cool. Yeah. Um, well, I one of the things that I did that was kind of food-centric this past month was uh, the Fancy Food Show came to San Francisco. It comes once a year. Um, but the majority of the stuff that's there are products, not prepared food. So I don't know if it falls under this category or Wagger Whimper. You mean like, uh... Well, it's a food conference. So it's like packaged food. Yeah. So I tasted a bunch of new packaged foods that I can talk about. So to you, whether you want to save them for Wagger Whimper or talk about them in this section. All right. To you. Okay. Well, we're gonna. Go, well, I'm gonna dive in. I think you'll know whether or not I feel like it's a Wagger Whimper by what I say. 
Okay, so the first thing was these artichoke chips, and I think the name of the company was pronounced Sinara. It's C-Y-N-A-R-A. -A. Um, and I've never had an artichoke chip, chip before, but it was really, really good. It, it legit tasted like you were eating a dried artichoke leaf, like mm -hmm. one of the inside ones that are nice and soft and delicious. It's been a while. And kind of sweet. They're, it was really, really good. Um, so I would look for those. I don't think they were organic, unfortunately, but if I see them in the store, I'll definitely get them. Um, whoever came up with that idea is brilliant. Um, go you. <laughs> go you. And one of the things I tried that I maybe shouldn't even talk about because it's not even on the market. So I'm just going to get people's hopes up and they're not going to be able to have it. It's going to be so sad is that Upton's is making jerky. And people might be familiar with Upton's because right now they have things in your stores um, like they make a bacon that's really good. Um, they, they make some jackfruit. Yes. Yeah. Like and sa I think they have some seitan products too. Yeah. Um, I really like their bacon because I used to really like sweet earth bacon um, and I stopped getting it and now I get the Upton's one. It's really good. So yeah, the difference between their jerky and what's been like up till now, my current favorite jerky, which is the Louisville jerky. I don't know if you ever get that one. Yeah, Matt's in their um, jerky the, of the month. Oh one. yeah. So he gets a package of you know, their limited edition and then some the regular of them ones. are just too weird for me. Yeah, I know. Like pineapple and stuff. Um, we, yeah, that one. And we also got one that was like cherry chipotle. Matt's like, no. Yeah. But those are the only two that, that you we didn't like. Yeah. I don't. I don't really eat it. So, um, but my the, we got the pineapple one, and my cousin Rachel, the vegan I was just talking about, she was visiting in July, and we had it. And I was like, "Here, you want to eat it on the plane as a snack?" She's like, "Yeah, I love that. I love that flavor." And there you go. Uh, good. There you go. Take Rob. So we too. yeah. <laughs> but mostly uh, we don't really get too many crazy ones. It's okay, just those good. two flavors. That okay. And Matt was like, "Nah." I mean, yeah. ten out of twelve. Is you know, he doesn't like fruit anyway, so it's like yeah. they're gonna eat fruit jerky. Yeah, hell no. Or flavored jerky. Yeah, but, fuck yeah. that. They should, nobody should do that. I, you know, I use it as my purse snack. Oh, look at you! It's such a good purse Perfect snack. Perfect pepperoni. Because it, it's does it's it make you hiccup? To... What? In every time I eat it, it starts hiccuping. Really? Like even like yesterday, I was I was on the way. Not yesterday. Was it tomorrow? Was it? The last couple of days, somewhere I called him when I got in the car coming home, and he's like, it, "I was like, did you eat? Did you eat some jerky?" He's like, "Yeah, I knew exactly what oh it was." Gosh, so she makes knew. it hiccup immediately. That's so funny. Yeah, it doesn't do that to me, but I also because it's like a purse snack, I eat like one or two pieces only. Yeah. I'm just eating it because like Had my stomach hurts. Yeah, right? exactly. I just needed to tie it over to my next meal. Yeah, so I don't okay. eat it as so a meal. weird. Yeah, that it's is a hiccup weird. without fail every time he eats it. I definitely have certain things that give me hiccups every time I eat them. It's the only thing that happens in, hmm. and it's that one. That's so I don't funny. think it's other. I don't think it's other jerkies. It's just interesting. That is interesting. I'm gonna stop him. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. um, it wouldn't stop me either. I'm pretty sure it's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, so the difference with the Upton's one is that it's chewier. Okay. So like you kind of put it in your mouth and you like chew it for a while before you swallow it. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't like coconut, shredded coconut, though. Because mm, so it doesn't. Like it. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Okay, well, going to have to find out Yeah, someday when they come out with it. I think they're still testing it. Um, okay, I tried a spreadable consistency cheese called Nut and Ordinary. It was delicious. And it's obviously made out of nuts. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it was kind of the consistency of like Miyoko's or a lot of the other cheeses out there, tree line, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was really good. I, re I recommend it. I think it's, I think they said they were going to be in stores in a couple months. So keep your eyes peeled for nothing ordinary. Um, I was very, very excited to discover coconut cloud, not because of all the other products they had, which is like hot cocoa mixes, but because they have a portable vegan coffee creamer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I'm really excited about because whenever I travel, I have to bring my liquid What do you giant... mean portable? Do you mean small packages or do you mean small, shelf stable? Small packages, shelf stable. Okay. It's like a powder. Both. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so it comes in like the single serving yeah. little. Yeah. Like you would expect from whatever coffee mate or whatever companies mm -hmm. make that shit. I don't, I don't even know. 
Um, and I haven't tried it yet, so I don't even know if it's a wag or whimper. Did she just spray you? She scared me. Ah! <laughs> she just sneezed on my foot. Um, and so I actually don't know if it's good. Wag in concept. To this yeah, point. in concept, yeah. And their booth was also really cute, which, of course, gets points for me. Um, good Planet was there. You've had Good Planet cheese before. Have I? They are out, and they are at mainstream stores. So maybe not. I haven't bought it unless somebody like bought it and brought it to something that okay. we were at or something. Okay. Yeah. I've gotten it at Grocery Outlet, which is usually where I get my stuff that is being sold at mainstream stores. Uh, and it's good. And I I think I'm going to be maybe hopefully working with them and making a recipe together. So hopefully I'll be able to eat more of it. Um, and then there were actually quite a few cheeses. I tried one called Ozzarella, which is an oat-based cheese that I think will make a really good multiple pizza cheese. I don't think it's the kind of cheese you're going to want to eat out of the package. Right. Mm. I tried it, and it doesn't have a bad flavor at all, but the consistency is very soft and not something you would want to snack on, I don't think. Okay. But it seemed like it would be perfectly meltable. So I'm hoping that that's going to be a thing that we're going to be able to find soon. Uh, let's see. They had a company called Yummy Dough, which made um, cookie dough in normal size containers, like you're going to bake cookies, and also in like a cute little like, oh, like a single size. serving eat your cookie dough straight from the package, which is so cute. And their packaging was really cute, too. Um, and those were all vegan. And the company that I was probably most excited about, you can see my little flyer mm-hmm. right there called Ocean's Halo. Have you seen their stuff in Whole Foods? I just started noticing them really I recently. Don't know. I don't think so. Okay. So they are uh, mostly a ramen based company. So the types of things they sell are noodles. They sell this like giant big bowl of chicken noodle soup thing. Um, and it's like a good size, like not like those wuss ass cup of noodles <laughs> that is like not for a normal adult human. Um, but it's like a giant ramen bowl, which looks really good. And I think they're all just add hot water. And then they also sell a whole line of vegan ramen broths, different types of vegan ramen broths. And they're in like a, a container that soy milks come in, like shelf stable soy mm-hmm. milks. Um, and so I'm kind of excited to try some of their stuff. So I have my little coupons there. I'm going to get ready to go to the store and stock up and see what I can do. Cause this time of year is very ramen time for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, how else are you going to keep warm in this frigid 55 degree weather? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm glad you understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's, that was my highlights from the fancy food show. There were definitely a lot of vegan ice creams coming out. Mm. I didn't try most of them, but one of the companies almost looked like they totally stole the not a moo branding. Mm. I didn't even see what the company was called. But if you see a vegan ice cream out there that looks similar to Not a Moo and isn't Not a Moo, that's them. Okay. Um, yeah, there's and there's an Ecl- a company called Eclipse that had a soft serve ice cream. There's just a lot of ice creams. Um, so that's good. That's happy good for me. It? I'm happy with it. Yeah. Too. Uh, for me, ice cream is better than frozen yogurt. I'm still going to go to that frozen yogurt place, though. Yeah, I still going to Get the souffle shit. No, don't, don't misunderstand. <laughs> um yeah so that's everything that i think is going on should we wag or whimper yeah let's talk about more food (laughs) (laughs) okay get the bad news out of the way first so our wag or whimper is where we talk about something we tried for the first time and tell you if it made us wag or whimper should i go first get the bad news out of the way let's get the bad news out of the way so I was very excited to see organic white truffle potato chips at Trader Joe's because I love finding organic things at Trader Joe's. They were terrible. They tasted real fucked up. Like so. alcohol mm, or something. Weird. And I've had truffle oil before, and it wasn't like that. Hmm. I don't even know what those what I would expect those to taste like. Yeah, it was not good. I don't think I've ever had truffle potato chips chips or anything what's weird is that david really liked them and ate the whole bag there you go so they can't be bad to everyone but i was not a fan i like didn't even want to have another a second chip after i had it i was like Mm-mm. wow yeah and i'm a potato chip fan 
I'm like the kind of fan that can just go through a whole bag of potato. Like I can open it, polish it off, throw it in the garbage. That's Matt, not me. Yeah, like no problem. I can do that. I mean, I enjoy them like occasionally, but I'm not. You're not a chip person. I could, like Matt, we buy them because Matt likes them, but, and I'll eat them if I do eat them because they're in the house. But if Matt didn't like them or I live by myself, they wouldn't be in the house. Mm -hmm. I just wouldn't buy them. Yeah. Yeah. But I know I'm in the minority. (laughs) Yeah. Because people love their chips. Yeah. Well, for you chip lovers out there, I'm telling you, these white truffle yes, potato chips, they are a whimper. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> All right. Do you have some good news for us? Yeah. Do you want me to go? Yeah. Back and forth. Okay. So, we have to, like, I think this is the third from the ground up thing that we've oh, yeah. talked about. It the is. other two we tried together. This one I tried on my own. Um, and it's, like, it's a chip. <laughs> We're like, the segue there talking about chips that I don't eat well this is what Matt picked up and I tried it and I'll, yeah so this is from the ground up it's the cauliflower sea salt f- flavored tortilla chips and he just he pulled them out and I was like ah you know let me let me out have a few chips or whatever and they were really good I feel like sometimes those cauliflower based stuff is can be a little bland mm-hmm. I mean because cauliflower is just kind of bland, bland and it's kind of a blank <laughs> slate but usually <laughs> even when you you can do a lot with it, but sometimes even when you do, it's not, it's not, it's doesn't, cut it, doesn't cut it for me. Um, so I wasn't, I think I actually tasted them first and then looked at them. I was like, oh, they're cauliflower. Cause I don't think I even would have tried them if I had seen that they were uh, cauliflower. Yeah. Um, but they're really good. They had a lot of flavor to them. Yeah. Like Shocking the stars. Yeah. They were very good. Um, and like I said, I was surprised because I usually the cauliflower stuff like that doesn't do it for me. Um, but this did. So the, from the ground up cauliflower, sea salt flavored tortilla chips made me wag. <laughs> and I also got a chance to try the brand new Amy's frozen pizzas. I don't know if I talked about these on a past episode. They just came out so. in December, I think. So I think I, I tried some when I was in Ohio. Really? Yeah, but I didn't know they were new. They are very new. Uh, they've never maybe had. It? Maybe it was Tofurky. I can't remember. Anyway. Uh, okay. Go on. So Amy's has. Amy's has had a lot of frozen meals out. They've never had a pizza that had vegan cheese on it before or vegan mock meat on it before. Okay. So this is the first time. Um, and the, I tried the vegan Supreme pizza, and it was very delicious. Very okay. good. I also made their new mac and cheese. They have vegan mac and cheeses now. Matt, pick, we picked those up for afternoon tea to have it like, on the side. Oh, I just had too much, and I couldn't eat them, and I ate both of them. <laughs> and so they were, I guess they were good. I ate both of them. <laughs> Ate mine, ate his. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, well, they're good, and I also put it on top of the pizza. So I had mac Ooh, and cheese. Mac and cheese pizza. pizza is a delightful. It was so good. Like, combination. I was very happy with it. Um, so, yes, the Amy's Vegan Supreme Pizza made me wag. <laughs> good. Yeah, actually, like, one of the best, like, mac and cheese pizzas I had was at the Flying Saucer in Salem. They had vegan mac and cheese pizza. At the Flying what? The Flying Saucer. Oh, the Flying pizza Saucer? Pizza place in Salem, Massachusetts. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was very good. Matt ordered it, and it was better than what I had. Oh, I thought, let me have some of it. And it was very good. So and Actually, yeah, they that, switched our he, order. We added I ordered like, pesto that. to it too, mm. or something. It was good. He knew he made a few like changes, and it was it was delicious. I love restaurants that let you modify your order. Yeah, whatever. Charge me for it. Whatever. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So might as well mm. get. What make you it want. worth your while. I don't care. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Is that everything? I think so. Okay, so that was the end of episode 51. Thanks for joining us. Uh, We're on Stitcher and iTunes and YouTube and Breaker and Podbean and Spotify, and I think Google Podcasts, but if you think we're (laughs) supposed to be somewhere else that we're not yet there, maybe you were trying to tell somebody that you know about our podcast and they were like, oh, I can't find it on whatever new and unique thing that I listen to podcasts Yeah, something like the hip kids are listening (laughs) on. Um, then we would love it if you'd let us know. You can reach us on Instagram or you can find all of our ways to contact us on our website, which is dollsanddonuts.com, all spelled out the proper way. Mm -hmm. And if you would like to gently stalk Ashley on the internet, she is at theveganadventure.com and she's Ashley the Vegan on Instagram. If you'd like to stalk me, I am (laughs) Vegan Dollhouse Everywhere. And I think that's it. Yeah. So thanks for spending your heart-shaped moment of the month with us. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So what's ha- what happens in March? 
Rainbows and is, leprechauns. Yeah, I was going to say St. Patrick's Day, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. All righty then. Thanks. We'll see you <laughs> next month. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Yeah.